I'm going to be talking about Camille Utterback and the artist's gesture. So if we're going to talk about Utterback's gesture, then we first need to understand what an artist's gesture is. The artist's gesture is pretty much anything done to the work of art by the artist or anything to, made to remind the reviewer that someone actually made this piece, like a brushstroke, for example. So when talking about Utterback's gesture, we mean anything she did to the piece in order to create it. Camille Utterback's work, in her words, is an attempt to bridge the conceptual and the corporeal. Through interactive mediums, she is allowed to represent the body as however she feels it looks like in the abstract. She's able to do this and share it with her viewers and participants in real time. She created her own software and design, which frees her work from the limits and preconceived notions of commercially based tools and software. She hopes to create a visceral connection between the real and the virtual through her work. As technology begins to drive our society forward, she doesn't want art to be left behind, so she started using the new technology as the main medium of her work. These phys physical digital interfaces provide the connective tissue between our bodies and the codes represented in our machines. Almost all of her work is interactive and deals with the body as a tool or bridge to access or alter the digital work. So in one of her first pieces, Text Rain from 1999, the participants use their body as a tool to catch falling letters on a screen, but don't exist in the, but the letters don't exist in real life. It draws attention to the symbolic codes embedded in our machines and technology as well as within ourselves. Participants are given the opportunity to truly see the connection between our physical bodies and the world around them. The body is connected is the connecting agent between us and technology in this piece. This was just the beginning of her using the body as a tool in her art. This is much simpler than her later works as the body is still represented by using its real image and just gives us an insight as to how the technology, how the technology and software behind her work operates. Next is her external measures piece from 2001, which is described as an intricate dance between computer algorithm and gesture. So it's a projected kinetic sculpture that changes its geometric composition upon the movement of viewers and participants in the space. So it responds to people's positions and movements via a video tracking camera or via video, via video tracking from an overhead camera. Sorry there. The different shapes, positions, lines, details, and existence of this projected sculpture fully depends on the body. The sculpture's composi composition gets more complex and begins to include certain elements as there are more people in the space. This creates an external visualization of the body's movements, of which the viewers and participants respond to, by moving according to the images on the screen, meaning they see the images on the screen and they move their body because they know it will change the image. From which just res from which the screen and software just responds according to how the viewers and participants are moving. So it's just a bit of inception. Um, so this is where she starts to use the body as a bridge into the artwork, as opposed to using the image of the body itself. She begins to experiment with how to represent the body in her work as well as starting to use the body as a method for creating compositions. In her next piece, Liquid Time, from around 2000 to 2002, it explores the concept of point of view and how it is predicated on embodied existence. So in this piece, the participants' movements and locations effectively fragment the pre-recorded video clip by breaking it up into different perspectives and times in the location of the participant in the space. It's a little bit hard to describe, but if you look on the right, um, you might be able to see this in play. The closer the participant gets to the screen, the deeper in time the clip goes into that section. As they move away, the image begins to heal in their wake. The body here is the interface which allows multiple times and perspectives to exist at once. In this piece is where she begins to experiment with the sensations that the body feels in life, being perception and time, and using the body as a tool to display these sensations all at once for us to see. 
In this piece, Untitled 5 from 2004, it is actually the um, fifth installment of her External Measures series. And the goal of this piece was to create an aesthetic of which responds fluidly and intriguingly to the physical movement in the space. This piece is much more organic than the other pieces in this series, and it brings more painterly aspects. What appears on the screen is dependent on the movement and location of the participants and viewers, just like in the external measures um, work. So here is where she switches to more of an organic composition as it makes more sense and mimics the body um, as the body is living in, is the living breathing tool that brings this living piece to life. In her piece Abundance from 2007, it quote, personalizes the site, altering participants' sense of ownership and belonging to a space that is already theirs as a public civil civic space. So here she trans, tra sorry, temporarily transformed the city hall plaza of San Jose into an interactive social space. By, she did this through an overhead camera, which is what captured the movement of the people through the plaza. And from this movement, an organic, delicate animation is projected onto the side of the building. People's movements aren't just recorded in real time and forgotten about when, the, when they leave. Um, the tracks everyone takes are mapped on the projection like a web to show how connected everyone truly is. As the installation was up, Utterbag continued to add and tweak its design, adding features like having individual silhouettes in cool colors and warm colors being for groups of two or more. Here is where the connection between bodies becomes visual. As her art is a living, breathing, or as her art is a living thing, so is the body, and she wants to show what living things do. They move, they breathe, they cross paths with one another and connect with one another in the real world. And Utterback wanted to make these connections visual. And in her piece, Shifting Time, San Jose, from 2010, it was an interactive video installation that juxtaposes the past and present, where the body becomes the interface to navigate between. So just like in her piece, Liquid Time, the closer, or the body is what fragments the image. Um... So this piece was commissioned and installed by the International Airport in San Jose and consists of both modern and old footage from historical sites or historical activities from around the city. Like I said, it's the same concept as liquid time, except that in this piece, the viewer's body creates a window into looking at the past. Viewers can go back and forth in time by moving closer and farther away from the screen. So, as her work evolves, she dives deeper into the things the body has, and one of these things is the past. Every body has a past. Like in liquid time, here the body is used as the connective tissue between the past and present, which in a sense is what our bodies do anyways. So, in conclusion, um, Camille Utterback truly does use the human body as her artist's gesture. It's what creates the composition of her pieces. It's what's the driving force throughout her pieces. Um, but as we can see throughout Utterback's work, she allows for the viewer and participant's body to be the gesture in her pieces, allowing for their body to create the composition as opposed to her, her own hand. However, her, ge her gesture specifically is seen in the behind the scenes work of creating her own software in order to allow the body to be the gesture which creates the composition. Thank you so much. <laughs>